It's release day. Hey crafty cuties, welcome back to Paper Terrace. If you're new, I'm Jessica. Previously, I'm a cool mom. And I am here because I honestly kind of forgot to finish off the mass journal making series. I basically showed you guys everything there was to see. However, let's just say when it got to the binding part, everything became a blur to me. I kind of had to rush to finish things off. And so anyways, we are here. The sale is done. It went amazing. I do have some clips to show, to talk to you about how everything went like after the sale was happening. But um, I am here binding the very last journal in the collection, which I kept for myself. It wasn't bound together because I just didn't have time. I kept A2 here which I'm very excited about. And I'm binding it, and so I thought I would just turn on the camera real quick while I'm binding this. Um, I have lots of binding videos, but since this is a whole series, I kind of wanted to show you. When it gets to the part where I bind all of the journals, this is where I go back through to each individual journal, and I will bind it because they're all a different size, they're all gonna have a different binding template. But if you remember, I would have had all of the journals um, sectioned out in their signatures with the pages decorated. This personal journal of mine, I actually keep the decorations off because I don't like to journal that way. But then I take paper clips and go ahead and hold each signature together with some paper clips. This particular journal has three signatures, but see, I can't really do an assembly line style with the binding because because of all those things I just mentioned. Every every journal is a different size, every journal has a different amount of signatures, and even the journal um, cover is a different size. So I just go through and do this individually. Once I have all of my signatures paper clipped together, I do go ahead and make a template, and I'm just going to punch a hole everywhere that has the little dot that I just made. So I'm gonna do that first and I like to start with the middle one. You can tape this down but I'm just going to hold it in place and then I will just poke a hole on all of the dots. Now it's time to poke the holes in each of the signatures and I'm just going to take the first one and I place the same binding template just right in the center and then I'm going to poke a hole where all of the holes are on the template all the way through. And then I'll repeat this for the other three, or sorry, the other two. <laughs> now I'm gonna take my binding thread and I'm going to measure it out to be about almost three times the size of the height. And I like to sew on the very last row first. And so I'm going to thread my needle. I'm using a waxed linen thread today. And to be honest, I really, really like um, using that. So I'm gonna take the last signature and we're just gonna do a whole, three whole pamphlet stitch. I have lots of binding videos on my channel. Um, I do, I just prefer this. It's easy, it works. And so I'm gonna sew out the center. I'm not gonna go in detail here since I have lots of videos, but I'm gonna sew up to the top, in through the, sorry, in th to the journal here. And then we go on down to the bottom hole, out to the outside, and then you're gonna come back into the center hole, trying your best not to sew back through the um, neat, or the same thread that you started with because that does make it a bit hard to pull everything really tight, but it's not first thing that you could do. <laughs> there we go. So it just takes me a minute to pull it up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tightly tie that off. And then I will repeat with the other two. There we go. Once I have all three sewn in, I just go ahead, take out all of the paper clips, and there we go. So now I'm gonna move on to the clips where I talk about how the sale went and just kind of summing up everything. And let's go. 
Hello crafty cuties, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica and I am just wanted to come on here really quick and kind of sum up how everything went for my summer collection release. Since I did a full series on how I make it possible to do such a big collection release like that, um, I've been working really really hard today and basically shipping everything and it made me think that like dang I've been super busy today and I don't know um, yeah I guess I just wanted to say that you know once you have this big sale there's still so much more work that comes after it not only do you have to ship everything off and you know you have to figure out how to combine orders so that things can ship the least expensive way but also like the best possible way to get to your customers safely um, but you also have tons of emails and questions and messages since I do a video showing my collection release I get a lot of comments asking about certain items and I do my best to try to get back to everyone because that's a huge part of the customer service part of it that really plays into why I think I do so well at these and then also I wanted to let you guys know how this sale went and it went amazing I didn't sell out everything but I have I'll show you what I have left right now so this is the next day let me just show you real quick these are the full-size journals that I have left and if I didn't show a clip this entire thing was full of journals I had about 30 full-size journals let me flip that back around I'm just kind of doing this vlog style so yeah, I had about 30 full-size journals and I have about eight left, which again, it's amazing. That's a huge deal to sell that many. And I'm actually really happy that I have some left so that um, if anyone wanted to get one later or some people, you know, have certain paydays and they can't purchase something until then and they're hoping something's available. So I'm always a bit happy when I have some things left over. Um, and let's see and then I had a few smaller like wallpaper packs and smaller journals that were also left but I sold the majority of those as well so I'm super grateful because it was a really huge success and it's crazy to make that many sales in one day it like I said it's a huge adrenaline rush to me um, to do these big sales and so um, yeah I've been packaging things up all day I have a huge pile over on my ottoman things ready to go out to the post office and so I'm going to go take those out but there's also a bunch of orders like I mentioned that are a bit tricky to figure out how to bundle together because it's almost like they're almost almost enough to go in one box but not quite enough to go in this and then it ends up being a lot more money than what you actually charge the customer and that's just kind of a part of it that's why you have to be so good at figuring out shipping costs prior to the sale and so I feel like I've got actually pretty good but there's a few oh uh, there's just always a few little hiccups the other thing is I had, did have a few glitches happen during the sale and I could not get all of my newer items to show at the very top of my Etsy page and so I had a bunch of people messaging me right away saying oh no is the is our thing sold out or are you not doing the sale at this time and I got it figured out it wasn't a huge issue but there were also a few other small issues and I can't quite remember what those are right now but I you know it's just it's a part of doing something like this when you have so much traffic to your site not like I have thousands of people but there's a lot of traffic and it can cause issues and you just have to try to stay as calm as you can and work through it the best that you can um so yeah that was all right but again i am so appreciative and um i just find it to make a lot of sense to do a collection release like this uh or restock whatever you want to call it um because uh, i think it I don't know I just think it works out I think it's a, a really successful way to go about selling on Etsy um, of course you have to have some type of a following but it doesn't have to be as big as mine it really doesn't I have uh, what 40 did I just hit 40,000 I can't I, I'll tell you I'm quite tired um, basically all I'm saying is you don't have to have a huge YouTube channel you don't have to have a 10,000 follower Instagram you just have to have a following of people that like your things and that um 
you know that look forward to buying from you and that can take some time to build up but once you have it I mean I've noticed so many repeat names in this sale um, I noticed just a handful of people that were with me from the very first sale that I ever did and that's so awesome to have loyal customers and just have people that are excited to purchase something from you every time you do something like this it's it's a great feeling and um, yeah well guys, I would love to answer any questions that you have, so leave them down below. And if I think of anything else to show you about kind of summing up and um, ending a big sale like this, I'll add it in here. I figured since I do get a lot of questions about shipping as well, I would show you some of the shipping supplies that I love to use. I love the brand Pack It Up Chic, and they carry a ton of different really gorgeous uh, poly mailers like this, which are really great for like my soft journals or any kind of embellishment packs, anything smaller for sure. Um, and then I, you can find all kinds of different like designs and things in these poly mailers and in different sizes. So I try to use the smallest possible poly bag for smaller items like these. But for my full size journals, I do actually take advantage of the free shipping from uh, shipping supplies from USPS. And by the way, if you didn't know, you can actually go online and order all of your shipping supplies. It's free. Um, I don't think you have to have an account. I do, but I'm pretty sure you don't have to. I'm not exactly sure, but um, so check that option out because I do like to send all of my larger journals in something like this or even a, a medium flat rate box if it's more than one journal. Um, and then I do package them up pretty on the inside. So even though this isn't gorgeous, I'll basically wrap them a lot of times in something like this. I personally love using the craft bag look like that. And I get the rolls like this just on Amazon. This is like $2 and it's a huge amount. I also have another roll like this that's a little bit thicker, more durable for some, some different items. Um, I also get all of these things on Amazon. And so I will try to link those down below. But you can see here, this is what I've got ready to go out. This is like maybe a third of what I need to package up. So it's a huge amount. I wanted to also give a reminder that um, including something like a little business card or something with your business name into the order makes a huge difference. Um, for instance, when they receive something like this, it makes it a little bit easier to perhaps go back and leave a review or to remember where they bought something from so that later if they wanted to get something similar it's just a lot easier to remember like a business name and it's fun to receive little freebies as well and i include little freebies in almost all of my orders honestly even if it's a few little things um because it makes a lasting impression on the customer. 